Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Hauser and I will show you how you can investigate the past of a port city and why understanding historic developments is important for future planning. Take for example the port city of Dunkirk in the north of France. In this presentation I will explore different moments of change linked to technological transformation, war and a major environmental disaster. I will show how much influence such events can have on the development of planning tools, policies and regulations, and ultimately on the current shape of port cities. Specifically, I want to show you how disasters have spurred the developments of plans, laws and policies, and how these have influenced the shape and organization of port cities over time. Like Newton's cradle, a disaster impacts the environment of the port, including the natural environment economic activity, citizens forcing the last marble public authorities to react and impact them back until the next disaster. Port cities around the world respond to similar challenges, new technologies and to changing maritime flows and disasters. Exploring global changes through history is a good place to start. To find out how these historic changes played out locally in light of local geographies, national political patterns or cultural backgrounds, you can go through a variety of sources such as books, old maps, governmental websites, IR pictures and archives. If you put these sources together, they will give you valuable information on the evolution of a port city from the past to the present. <clears throat> when we look at Dunkirk, we can see the interaction between global and local developments. The ports and the city responded to challenges of industrial modernization and the development of new fuels the same way as they appears in the Dutch port of Rotterdam or in Antwerp in Belgium. There were similar drivers of change in the construction of the port, the organization of the city and the hinterland, especially at the end of the 90th and the beginning of the 20th century. Like Rotterdam and Antwerp, Dunkirk was a small city close to the sea gifted with river access to the hinterland. Since the 1860s, all three cities have evolved into major national and international hubs for trade and oil industries. Some of the main moments of change in urban development, urban planning and safety regulation in port cities result from disasters, such as fires and explosions. In Dunkirk, many such disasters and the planning and regulatory reactions they triggered had to do with the development of the petroleum industry after the mid 19th century. In 1868, oil transshipment caused a fire in the port of Dunkirk. In 1891, a fire and explosion at the refinery of Clairboilet destroyed nearby houses and killed several people. These disasters had major consequences for the special planning of the port of Dunkirk and the port's relation with its urban area. Local representatives of the government developed planning and legal standards to try and guarantee the safety of people and places in port and city. However, these same local authorities prioritized economic development of the port city rather than the enforcement of strict safety regulations. At the end of the 19th century, local authorities were often not able or willing to control the actions of private industrial leaders such as Claire and Pristram, another local oil investor, which were connected to national decision makers. The construction of industrial facilities in port cities therefore became a struggle between industrial actors and public authorities interested in economic growth and the citizens' concern about urban liability. You can see all these different interests, scales and powers in the special transformation of Dunkirk as a result of the emergence of the city as a petroleum hub. Beginning in the 1860s, the port city had become an entrance point for petroleum around the world. A taxation decree in 1863 on refined product forced oil companies to refine oil themselves to avoid an additional tax. Specifically, it led to the creation of multiple refineries in France, thus also in Dunkirk. To facilitate economic growth and industrialization, France needed a comprehensive national port, rail and road infrastructure that connected maritime trade to the hinterland, especially to the capital, Paris. In 1878, the Fressinet Plan, an economic plan developed by Charles de Fressinet, 
then the French Minister of Public Works, changed the form and function of port cities throughout France. The port and the city of Dunkirk first changed dramatically in the late 19th century. The national government, with the help of private companies, built new basins and reorganized docks to accommodate the growing number of ships arriving in the port and the increased flow of goods passing through Dunkirk. This new organization took into account the previous disasters detailed before to improve security in the port. The modifications implemented by the Fresnel plan led to the construction of a floating dam to prevent leaks of burning oil in the last basin of the port. It also created new docks dedicated to oil located at a distance from the city center. These were a clear reaction to the oil transshipment event. After the fire and explosion of the refinery, the local representatives of the government stepped in to implement new building requirements around oil facilities with a distance requirement between the industrial sites and houses and the requirement of basins for storage areas. Global wars have led to the disruption of maritime flows and the destruction of many port cities, but also to the development of new plans, laws and policies. The Second World War greatly affected Dunkirk, with more than three quarters of the city being destroyed. The port and all industrial facilities were completely wiped out by the conflict. The renewal of the port city took a long time and was supported by the establishment of new economic activities and industries. After the war, a law gave the management of French ports to the national government. It allowed the dedication of large spaces in port cities to the establishment of industrial facilities. In Dunkirk, this process led to new port infrastructures extending to the west and modifying the shape of both the coast and the port. Another moment of change for port cities in Europe and for Dunkirk in particular is related to the 1976 disaster that occurred in the small Italian city of Seveso. The Seveso disasters saw dioxin released into the air by a local chemical plant. The leak contaminated a large area around the plant and led to displacement and necessitated the decontamination of the soil. The disaster had a strong impact on regulations concerning the relationship between industrial activities and urban areas. While it did not take place in a port city, this incident greatly impacted special planning in port cities. The Seveso Directive, European Institution Legal Response of 1982, implemented the classification of the most dangerous industrial sites for inhabitants, the so-called Seveso site. This regulation forced port and public authorities of port cities to adapt their special planning and led to further division between industrial areas, hosting dangerous facilities and other urban spaces. It also highlighted the growing importance of the European Union in influencing port cities with an additional layer of regulation. Port cities host many Seveso sites. Dunkirk alone hosts 15 that are listed as high threshold, particularly dangerous. Port and city authorities had to adapt planning to put dangerous activities away from urban centers. In the case of Dunkirk, such regulation pushed the port area to develop further west from the city. This strategy increased the protection of inhabitants, but also deepened the physical division between port and urban areas and consume many natural spaces along the coast. If efficiency led by economic policies triggered the first wave of separation between the port and the city, concerns around security and environmental quality progressively stepped in to protect port city's inhabitants. Yet the development of the past are often ignored or underestimated in current planning strategies. In the case of Dunkirk, past oil sites that were first on the periphery of the city are now within its urban tissue without any decontamination. This creates a situation where citizens are bound to a piece of land that hosted industrial activities and therefore could affect their health. This phenomenon highlights the importance of knowing the past to efficiently plan the future of port cities. Disasters, laws and economic policies are only some examples of factors and events that shaped or are shaping your case study. Maybe you can identify other factors relevant to your specific case. Now it's your turn to think about it. Thank you for your attention.